I've been Ryder Cup Project Director of Event Scotland now for nine years uh, and my job along with my team has been to make sure that Scotland uh, is ready to host the best ever Ryder Cup this September uh, at the wonderful Glen Eagles Hotel up in Parsha. So the Ryder Cup, what's it all about? Um, it is one of the world's biggest sporting events. Uh, lots of statistics about whether it's the third biggest, the fifth biggest, the fourth biggest, it doesn't really matter. Um, Scotland aspires to host major sporting events. Uh, we're very, very lucky that this year, 2014, we don't just have one of the world's biggest golf tournaments, but we also have the Commonwealth Games as well. And the fact that we're uh, trying to do that within eight weeks of each other just shows uh, Scotland's ambition in hosting major events. So what, what does a Ryder Cup and a successful Ryder Cup mean for Scotland? Well, we have a very clear vision. Three elements a pre- and post-event legacy for Scotland. Um, I'm not going to talk about legacy because uh, a, a fundamental part of one of the successes of the Ryder Cup legacy, uh, Hamish is going to talk about that in a few minutes. Um, second of all, a fantastic event experience. That spectator experience for us is probably critical. Having been to the last uh, five Ryder Cups uh, in a, in a, uh, as part of a role of, of, of observing and learning from those Ryder Cups, what I've yet to see is really the, 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 the warmth of welcome that I know that, that we as Scotland can give to the Ryder Cup. It's our job and part of our job to make sure that we are educating and inspiring our hospitality industry to make sure that they go, the Ryder Cup, you're here for the Ryder Cup, you can have a great time. They, they can talk about it, they can talk a bit, a bit of banter, which is what we'd expect from our cab drivers, or you know, when they check into the hotel, um, again, the lady behind reception is, is geared up ready, knowing why they're here for the event. Legacy doesn't um, stop when the event finishes. It's got to go on beyond that. So what, what about, what are the challenges going forward beyond 2014? And there I might touch on a wee bit the challenges facing golf, which are undoubtedly a changing consumer market, a decline in membership. And when that membership is the, um, at the heart, of, if you like, of the financial model that, that our clubs survive on, it's a real challenge for golf at the moment, and it will be, I predict, for at least another 20 years. And we're, we're going through a paradigm shift, a culture change, uh, and that's going to be a long journey. But I believe this event and all the work that we put in, particularly with the junior generations, hopefully will stand us in better stead to meet that challenge than would otherwise be the case. So it's quite unique around the world of golf. It's something we treasure whenever you talk to anyone within golf that it is accessible to everyone but it's something we must work at. We can't expect that to self-perpetuate itself. And that's at the heart of what we try and do within our strategy, is make the game accessible to all. So our focus was to set up a national junior golf program. We called it Club Golf. It was at the core of the bid that went through. And as Robbie said, that bid was for 2009 initially. September 11 happened. That became 2010, because the year was missed. And then we got 2014. From a sport development point of view, absolutely brilliant. It gave us four more years to build towards that. So the legacy is richer as a consequence of that. So in our usual fashion, thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Thank you.